let me tell you something. There is no nobility in poverty. I have been a rich man and I have been a poor man and I choose rich every fucking time. If I've learned anything in life, it's that we love two things, visuals and scammers. We love the idea that we can see people living lives we could never afford to live, doing things we could never afford to do. But what we also really love is knowing that they're not doing it fairly. And that's because when they finally do get caught, it makes it that much sweeter. So in order to unpack this, I want to review the three biggest scammers of the last year, if not this generation, where they went wrong, where they went right, and what we can learn from all of them. Bon appetit. <laughs> <laughs> And what better place to start than with the most grandiose scammer of the last year, Hush Puppy. The TLDR is this guy and his crew scammed about half a billion dollars just via email scams, credit card scams, general fraud, you know, the usual. This guy was giving it to everybody. Banks, law firms, football clubs, nobody was safe. This guy was the LeBron James of internet fraud. Actually, the biggest mistake he made was being on and performing for social media. We actually should have known that this guy was a scammer when he started hanging out with footballers like Benjamin Mendy. That's not proof. It's still debatable. But it's a good piece of evidence. And that was his biggest mistake because the FBI literally used his social media to track him. This is the problem when you start performing for strangers on social media. Just enjoy your money quietly, stay off social media, move to a quiet place like, I don't know, Cape Town. And if anybody asks you where your money came from, just remember rule number one don't explain if people don't believe that a guy named hush puppy is a legitimate businessman that's their problem as long as you're quiet about it people will leave you alone it's that simple overall i give this scam a six and a half out of ten it was very grandiose but the problem was he was way too loud he got a bit too arrogant busy trying to scam football clubs and banks and the socials killed him Dylan, does your girlfriend think you're a fucking worthless loser good pick up the phone and start dialing i want you to deal with your problems by becoming rich! Next we have the IG goat scammer. This is the voice of a generation. That is Dan Bilzerian, aka Mr. Instagram. My favorite thing about this scam is that it's actually happening as we speak. You can literally just search his name on YouTube. You will see a ton of content creators are focusing on this because right now he's being investigated by the SEC. Obviously, he's been claiming for years that he made his money playing poker on some Casino Royale tip. But in actuality, it came from his dad, who was a corporate raider in the 80s and used some bezel funds. Embezzle! Embezzle! I was helping her Embezzle! She's talking about embezzle money. Embezzle, bitch. Embezzle! So anyway, this scam is happening in real time because the only reason we caught onto a scam is because he decided to list on the stock exchange. Someone needs to exercise discretion because come on, mate. Obviously, if you list on the stock exchange, you have to report to the regulators and they're going to catch on that you've been using company funds to fund your lifestyle. Dan, I mean, come on, mate. Anyway, it's best for him now with the feds closing in, but he should be fine because like his dad, he got Armenian citizenship. So chances are he's going to flee the country. Good times. And I know a lot of content creators want to focus on the negative because of what he did and stuff, but personally, I love Dan because of what he represents. Dan represents an idea. Do that as Bruce Wayne. As a man, I'm flesh and blood. I can be ignored, I can be destroyed, but as a symbol, as a symbol, I can be incorruptible. I can be everlasting. What symbol? Dan is shameless and he shows you just how liberating money can be because he's showing you that as long as you're not hurting anyone, you should be allowed to live how you want. If you want to live fast and die young, that's on you, mate. This doesn't apply to him because he uses stolen money, defrauded investors, dismissed the reputations of workers and injured people, but the point still stands. Overall, I give this scam an 8 out of 10 because it's fantastic and the visuals were amazing, but the problem was he decided to list on the stock exchange and start using company money instead of cashing out and leaving. Could have been somebody. I prefer really not to, um, not to speak. If I speak, I am in, in big trouble. In big trouble. And I don't want to be in big trouble. Finally, we have Fire Festival, the scam to end all scams. This was the greatest party that never happened. In fact, this scam was so glorious it earned two documentaries, one on Netflix, one on Hulu. Just thinking about it gives me goosebumps. <laughs> the TLDR is Billy and Ja Rule planned a music festival in the Bahamas on Pablo Escobar's island. Now that is very sexy. On top of all the music, they promised direct proximity to celebrities and luxury amenities. Basically, an island version of Coachella. 
So they made the sexiest ad ever and set tickets for sale and it sold out immediately. I mean, this was Nike level marketing. It was crazy. The main reason this didn't work out actually is because they overpromised and didn't deliver because they gave themselves way too much to do. Essentially, they sold the tickets in January and promised the festival would be in April, which is totally unrealistic. And obviously, another reason it didn't work out is because they chewed the money before doing any of the work. We had a dinner party in Stanielski. Is to living like movie stars, partying like rock stars. Billy? And fucking like a car star. <laughs> Billy was activating models, renting jet skis and pirate ships, instead of focusing on the actual work. I mean, come on, brother. I still maintain that this is still a great and visionary idea, it just lacked implementation. I mean, I'm just amazed at how well they understood their target market. I mean, they were consistently able to fleece hundreds of thousands of dollars from clients without any proof of concept. Overall, I give this scam a 10 out of 10 because it was glorious, it tapped into what people really care about which is the culture of influence and celebrity, and it was such a mess. I mean, this was THE scam. 10 out of 10. Ugh. You need people like me. You need people like me so you can point your fucking fingers I say, that's the bad guy. So what I'm seeing with some of these scams is that the ideas are there, but they just lack execution. This is why if you're going to scam, you need a very strong operating team. And also, it's really important not to use your scam funds to fund your lifestyle. Don't get high on your own supply. Look, if Billy managed to actually do Fire Festival, even if it was garbage, I mean, as long as he delivered his artists and his food, people would be fine. He wouldn't be in jail right now. Oh, by the way, he started a podcast from his jail cell. Go check it out. Dan and Hush Puppy, their downfall was social media. Hush was a pure scammer, so he really shouldn't be on social media at all. And he shouldn't live in countries with extradition treaties. Just settle down and enjoy your money quietly, bro. Similarly, Dan was also too loud. He should have just enjoyed his dad's stolen money and cashed out immediately after the IPO. Just live your life. You can't be embezzling funds from a listed company. You're just inviting a necessary scrutiny, brother. Well, they all want to work for you now. Hey, what did I say? Just, just gotta be nice. Hey, you want a job? Give me a minute, so, so, Mr. Belfort. Forbes made me a superstar. Yes, these guys were targeting the most gullible people online who are easily duped, but also these people need to just apply their minds. Lee was a tech starter bro, but he said his business partner should be Ja Rule. Red flag. Hush Puppy was a businessman, but he calls himself Hush Puppy. Red flag. And Bilzerian had no credible proof of funds. He just told you he played poker and you believed him. You never saw him at any tournaments or anywhere else. You just saw him balling. That's a red flag, bro. So listen, I'm not saying that all the victims deserve to have their money stolen and stuff, but come on guys. So in conclusion, if you're going to scam, you just need to follow these simple steps. Do the work, don't get half your own supply, stay off social media and don't get extradited. Very important. And if you don't want to be scammed, follow these steps. Use common sense, question things critically. Not everyone who questions something is a hater. We all just need to apply our minds. Wallahi, if I could just expose what I know. On the outside, it has this awesome image. But on the inside, it's filth and rubbish. Come and see. Guys, thank you so much for making it this far to, into the video. If you really want to enjoy these scammers some more, just Google or YouTube any of them. Otherwise, watch Billy's documentary on Netflix or Hulu. You are going to die. Thanks again for watching. Like and subscribe. Bye.